Real talk? You want me to get controversial? Let's go. Get controversial. Let's Let's go. Go go. off queen. Go off queen. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Volume 1, the anime and manga podcast where we highlight and discuss new series each week. But today, we are back with more One Piece, which means that my name is Josh Kuma Michael. And of course, I am joined, as always, by none other than Megan Perrine. But that is not all. Oh. We are also joined today oh, by shooty. a very, very special guest. A lot of people have been guessing. And if you saw the thumbnail, <laughs> then you already know who it is. <laughs> but she is a booktuber extraordinaire, occasional manga reader, lover. She is a beautiful soul, a beautiful person. Everybody, <laughs> give a warm welcome to Murphy. Napier! (laughs) Murphy, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I was just, I didn't expect the big intro, so I I was frantically Googling my character's name because I forgot his (laughs) name. (laughs) Do you guys know who I am? Uh, It's super obvious. This is the best cosplay I've ever done. (laughs) I I'm gonna take a guess. Okay, 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 okay. guess first. You guess um, first. Shoot. I've got the scar. I've got the bandages. Got the scar. You got the bandages. I've got the I, torn I, clothes. I mean, that's describing ninety percent of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I never got the scar. Oh, the star. Scar. I, I, there scarf. was a scarf. Scarf. There should oh, be a scar. Oh, oh, oh. oh. The, Ro- uh, Roma. Yes. Roma. Romi. Ro- you. The, Roma. The, the, the undead. The samurai guy. The, the You're guy right. Yes. Has, Yes! Yeah. Is, it who, is it the guy who has Zoro's shadow or is it the guy who has Brook's shadow? Brook's shadow. Brook's shadow. Brooke shadow. Brooke yeah. shadow. But, but Zoro, Zoro fights him, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I knew it. I knew it. I, I, knew, it. I knew it no, first. I knew it. I knew Literally, it. you're taking credit. No, I knew you're it. You're crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, I guessed it right. I'm a real One Piece fan. Josh isn't. <laughs> points to Perona. Well. Always, always points to Perona. It wouldn't matter if Josh won. Always points to True. Perona. True. True. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I reject. All that, okay. all that negative energy. Mm-hmm. Right you now. didn't even put it. the paws on your hands. <laughs> okay. I can't right. even be bothered. Maybe I'll put it in post. Maybe I'll put it in post <laughs> and you'll see it right here. Josh, I, w- I say your your costume, your cosplay today is pretty possum. Possum? Like po- like awesome. Oh, but paws, <laughs> but possum. And you know oh. I don't like possums, and that's oh. crazy. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, the puns are gonna be wild today, guys. Oh, Get ready. No. Get yeah. ready. I'm yeah. ready. I'm breaking out today. Yeah, okay? Megan's been doing a lot of preparation. I've been writing and I've been laughing to myself. I've been like, oh, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> of course, everybody here, I'm sure everybody here knows who Murphy is, but if you don't know, um, she has caught up on One Piece in the past. I think it's she said it took her a year to catch mm. up. Um, she has a bunch of videos on One Piece uh, series reviews. They're fantastic, they're great. Um, arc reviews. She has a video on Thriller Park as well, but we're going to tell, um, we're going to sort of exchange our thoughts and tell you how we felt when we first reacted to it. And we're interested to know sort of how you feel about things, even though we already, you know, kind of know because we saw the video, <laughs> uh, your video, Murphy. But I think it'd be fun to talk about it all together. So this arc, first of all, gets, I wouldn't say as much hate as Skypea. Skypea. Yeah, I never heard people say skip Thriller Bark. It's always sure, sure. skip Skypea. And either or, not good, but. Yeah, but a lot of people say that this, and we said this in our first video, Murphy, I wonder if, if you agree. Um, people said, we had a couple commenters saying that, oh yeah, Thriller Bark is gonna, don't expect too much, it's gonna be a breather arc. It's still in the in the grand scheme of things or in the grand line scheme of things. Ooh. It is, um, it's something that's really not super important to the overall story. Yeah, uh, no, that's totally not true. Yeah, I completely it's- disagree. <laughs> I, get the, I get the nothing happened joke Okay, now. yeah, we get it. We get it, you guys, you guys, you guys are in on the joke, we get it now. <laughs> now I feel like I'd gain another badge on my One Piece vest yeah, of honor. You got me. Okay. Okay, is that what you want to hear? You got me. <laughs> got all, him. Yeah, I was like, what do you, I was getting enraged, dude. I was like, what, what do you mean nothing happens? What you, so many things happen. I was thinking like maybe they like Luffy wakes up and it was all a dream. I was like, is that what they mean by nothing happens? I, I was speculating yeah, up and down. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. But no, no, a lot of things happen, you guys. Um, we loved, obviously, the first part. We loved the second part. But since we have Murphy here, Murphy... If you wouldn't mind, what are your thoughts, I guess, on people's opinion about Thriller Bark in the grand scheme of things? And just, I know there's a lot of other points, like uh, maybe I'll rattle them off and you can kind of go through how you feel about them as well. But, you know, a lot of people had a problem with Sanji 
a lot, you know, in his sort of attitude or his his change his attitude. Of, his, ch- his, attitude. <laughs> his attitude. He had an attitude problem, <laughs> um, but his change of character. I feel like a lot yeah. of people feel like that he really changed something about his character. Changed that he became more pervy. The villains, people hate the villains. Um, and yeah, the whole thriller Bart versus Skypea comparison. How do you feel about that, Murphy? I know that's a lot to throw at you. No, 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 no. It's fine. I think I think for thriller Bart, a lot. A big reason why a lot of people dislike it is one, because it's sandwiched between two excellent arcs. Mm -hmm. And two, it is very long without an extreme amount of action. I know Shonen tends to have a ton Mm. of action. Um, Oda just doesn't feel the need to have action on every single page, but we still got like the biggest, baddest fight scene at the end of the arc. For real. I mean, my goodness, it was so good. Yeah. Um, But also just, it's a really different vibe than the rest of One Piece, you know? like. One Piece is this adventure, and Thriller Bark doesn't feel very adventurous. It feels very closed and very, like, spooky and creepy, and it's just a different kind of vibe from the rest of One Piece. Um, <laughs> too true, and, Murphy. Yeah, go off. Too true. And it is true, too, that remove Wano, remove our current arc, Thriller Bark <laughs> has felt outside of the rest of One Piece. It's felt like a side tangent. Mm-hmm. Now it's extremely relevant, but uh-huh. it yeah. hasn't been. Right. So it will come back around. Everything comes back around. But but uh, <laughs> it has felt isolated for a long time. And I understand that. I I love my gothic girl. I love my mm-hmm. Corona. I love gothic feels in general. I thought yes. that the artwork of Thriller Bark was on another level. Couldn't and agree it, more. Oh my goodness. And and the gags. I saw you guys' last video. The gags in this are so constantly good. It has, mm-hmm. I think a big part is that the Sanji moment is a big low. And there are a lot of people who don't really have a problem with it and that's fine. You can like what you like. But a lot of people have a problem with it. And mm-hmm. I think that really sours the whole arc for a lot of people. And it didn't sour the whole arc for me, but it is a part that I, I will go off about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, let's go off about that for a second, because I, I also saw in our comment section that people say it wouldn't have been as big of a deal if it didn't feel like from this point forward, Sanji sort of continued down that, that path, that road. Like he didn't snap back to being the type of, you know, I guess pervy gentleman that he had been before. He became a little bit more of what he was in Thriller Bark in the story forward, going mm. forward. Do you agree with that? I mean, I can't really no, speak to that. No, I don't. I, I mean, that's kind of hard to talk about outside mm. of, you know, spoilers. I yeah. don't agree with that. I do think that this is a low moment for Sanji. I think it's his lowest moment. There's one that I guess you could kind of argue rivals, but I don't think it does. Mm. But I think that... I, <laughs> I mean, real talk, you want me to get controversial? Let's I'll get go. controversial. Let's, Let's go. Go, go. Off queen. go off queen. Go off I think that Oda missed it. I think this was just Oda missing it. I think uh, that Oda, Oda has... He's a human. He he's ha- a human. Yeah, of course he... Yeah, sometimes. Like, sometimes his humor <laughs> is going to be a miss. Yeah. And I think that his humor is on point throughout this whole series. And he tried to make that Sanji thing funny. Sanji is a perv. He's a <laughs> ladies' man. He's, like, all this stuff. And, like, him... Him being after the ladies and him always wanting a girl and always simping, like there's nothing, it's there's nothing overly offensive about that. Mm-hmm. I just think that Oda tried to make a gag out of this villain and out of Sanji also wanting to peep on women, and like he missed the joke, he missed the plot. Like it just wasn't that funny. He took it too far. Yeah. And I don't think that Sanji goes too far very often in the series. I think that his particular brand of humor is the off-putting sometimes but like <laughs> yeah it's not borderline. like he's not yeah. talking about wanting to violate privacies you know no, what I mean? exactly. well that was kind of the crazy thing and again we kind of touched on it a little bit but having more time to kind of collect my thoughts on it i guess is that scene with absalom in the in the bath with nami yeah. that was that oh, felt man. so that felt so completely out of place, out of place in, yeah. in, in one piece and, and again, like to the point of like Oda missing it and him being human and, and it happens, especially over the course of thousands of chapters, it's bound to happen. Yeah. But I think he kind of he kind of missed it maybe with Sanji, but he for sure, I think, just super kind of went too far with Absalom. We we have like we're yes. coming off of Spandam, right, who is like a villain that we hate and we hate <laughs> yes. him. We love to hate him. We love to hate him. Um, But this is a different it's this is like a, I, I hate him, but I'm also really kind of disgusted and, and like. Kind oh, of yeah. like turned off by him and, and don't really care. At the end, too, of this part, 
you know, there's this like hog back and him and mm -hmm. Moria all kind of, you know, survive and they're like together, like, oh, what's our next adventure going to be? And, and it's like, like, I hope I never see you again. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so as far as that scene in the bathhouse, I think that there's nothing wrong with having Absalom that kind of, or Absalom, I don't know how to say his name. I mean, you you're, say, you're probably saying it right. I no, know. I say everything <laughs> wrong. So it's probably not me. I think there's nothing wrong with that villain being villainous, right? Like what he did yes. to Nami is despicable. Yes. Is the fact that the scene, the way it was drawn was also kind of sexualized is mm. where it was like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, and yeah. yeah, that's kind of where I teeter. Cause we've, um, you know, we've, we've reviewed series like uh, Goblin Slayer, which has a pretty, you know, uh, controversial scene where it depicts some pretty graphic stuff. But the idea behind it is that you're supposed to, th this is what monsters do. And you're right. supposed to feel like they're monsters and you're supposed to hate them. And mm -hmm. there's this sort of like glamour, not glamorizing, but there's this sort of like uh, softening up villains a little bit in, in a lot of maybe like mainstream media so that they are more it is more maybe marketable or it's not mm -hmm. as controversial mm -hmm. and, and villains don't seem to be as like villainous maybe as like a real life monster would be. And so mm -hmm. like, I, I kind of get that point a little bit too, but I guess just in one piece, it just felt off. Yeah. That was yeah. Like the first time we've really seen it like that heavy handed. I think Oda, especially like we see, you know, like obviously like there's some scenes of like Nami and Sanji or like other, other types of characters, but this is like the most, fan servicey thing which it shouldn't be fan servicey at all because it is like her literally getting attacked yeah, <laughs> yeah like yeah, i could totally, see anywhere totally. else like her like you know like laying on the beach or like just doing her thing but it's literally like the depiction of like a horrible act and mm -hmm. we're like this is where you decide to do it oda this is this is <laughs> yeah, where you yeah. decide to to put that out there so mm -hmm. those two parts felt really off so that was a low for you as well yeah maybe. for sure yeah for sure mm -hmm. yeah, I don't and have I, I'll, yeah i'll clarify this because i did say that like i don't think this continues the theme of peeping does continue i just don't think that it gets to this level again Right. Mm. So I don't. I, mean, I, I just don't want you guys to like think. Oh no, Sanji's character is ruined. He still has so many amazing moments, uh, but this is definitely. It was the lowest for me for sure. Yeah. I was so mad at him when I, I read this because too. I, I he's, like, he's a attacked. person. Yeah. yeah. Like he doesn't feel like a fictional character. It's like this is someone that yeah. I have grown to love so much. It's and like, it just. Like, you're better you than this. Yes, I know. You're like, don't do this, Sanji. Don't go to this low. Yeah, yeah I, I do feel too. Like, I mean, in I, unfortunately, like peeping and stuff like that, it, it it tends to be a trope of of the medium of manga a lot of the time. Yeah. Right. Um. But with Sanji and the whole Absalom thing, like, I felt like it could have been fixed with just a line where in, in their when in their fight. If he would have just said, like, that was my dream as a child, but then mm -hmm. I decided or I grew up or I decided that I didn't want to be that type of perv Man. or something. Yeah, I don't Instead know. of saying, you know? I'm still going to peep, even if I don't have the fruit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And being like, oh, you know, I, I wish I, you, you stole my you stole my life. If I found this tomorrow, I would have ate it for sure. Like, right. what are you talking about, Sanji? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah or even yeah. just not playing it off as a gag and just making it like a serious character flaw that we have to explore or something. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. That yeah. would have yeah. also been interesting. That yeah. I think I would have accepted you, that more. You've got us yeah. started on a real controversial note. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We're ready. I already hear the uh, comments. Right. Actually, uh, this was a very important moment for us. Getting. <laughs> no, I think. I mean, so far, people seem to be in like unanimous agreement that that, that, that was this the is a low. love for Sanji. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Good. How about the villains? Did you feel um, oh, like, man. yeah, obviously without, you know, giving too much away in terms of like future arcs, but the villains here up until this point, did you, um, were you, a f were you a fan of them? Did you hate them as much as other people seem to have hated mm -hmm. them? Um, I hate Absalom. I mean, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. Besides like Gecko, we have Gecko, we got Hot Yeah. Back. So obviously Perona is the queen of the universe and deserves great. every good thing in the world. Um, so she's a brilliant antagonist um kuma is a brilliant antagonist love kuma uh, oh. I mean, obvious obviously oh yeah kuma <laughs> <laughs> you do that good <laughs> um and then let's see M moria i think a lot of people don't like moria just because he's kind of a deadbeat um i don't like his character design but i don't dislike him as a villain did you mm. guys have i mean were you fine with him i think now that we've completed the arc well megan you go first how did mm. you feel 
I mean, he, he, he definitely, like, towards the end, I saw a couple things, uh, like, didn't really make sense. Like, he kind of just forgot, like, how his powers worked. I feel like towards the end of it, he's like, oh, I'm just going to do this and let's let's see how it turns out. So that kind of felt a little off. But yeah, he didn't really. I mean, that was the whole thing. Like he didn't want to do much. He let everyone else do the bidding for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, ultimately at the end of the arc, like I don't hate him. I mean, I'm not going to say he's like one of my favorite villains. But, yeah. I mean, you're right in that we just came off of like. A, an amazing two amazing you know arcs you know Annie's Lobby Water 7 mm -hmm. and you know there was like Lucci and CP9 and all oh, that oh yeah 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 um so obviously he's Moria is like a significant downgrade in the villain department but I I don't like hate him I I, I think like you know depending on translations like I, even maybe like if we're comparing it to Skypea and now Inaru depending on the translation like I do feel like he was I don't know like he was kind of equal to me I, in a lot of ways maybe he was a slightly above moria but i mean not by by much i mean i i don't i didn't really walk away at the end of this like hating him i understand like mm. you know I, I get why you would feel maybe why he he felt like he forgot how his powers were used but for me it just felt like that was, that was again he doesn't want to do a lot that's a last stitch effort mm. he's trying to buy time he's trying to run out the clock um i don't know i just i mean his design it, it was a little like uh, not my favorite. He looks favorite like a deflated of, balloon. He, he does. Of Oda's <laughs> character designs, which Oda almost every time knocks it out of the park with character designs. I mean, speaking of Kuma, I'm like, oh my God, this, this, yeah. shouldn't, this shouldn't work. This shouldn't, not. <laughs> this shouldn't make me feel scared. Well, the right? thing about, I shouldn't like this at all. Like, it's just the body is so weirdly proportioned. Like, yeah. what well, is that? What am I looking at? That's one piece for you. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. The body is weirdly proportioned. One piece. And even like, even like the Co tagline. Kokoro, right? You know, who... Kokoro, oh, I love Who, her. Who's like, this That's my queen. Weird looking character. I mean, it works all the time. But there's something about Moria, like it just didn't work. He's an yeah. inflated Chocula, Count Chocula. Yeah, he looks like a Hotel Transylvania character. Totally. Yeah. Hotel Transylvania vibes for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I think when Kuma was introduced, I was like, this is, he kind of overshadowed. I mean, he completely yeah, like. Sure. He steals the, the show. He yeah. did. Yeah, I was like, totally. Gecko, what you doing? Yeah, yeah in, a, in a quarter of the page I know. time. Yeah, you know? it's yeah. insane. So for Moria, he is like, he wanted to be the king of the pirates. He wanted to, mm. you know, find the one piece and he failed and he lost his crew and now he's alone, right? So mm -hmm. I think that he serves his purpose as far as what his character is, which is mm -hmm. someone who had great ambitions, lost their dream, lost their family, and is now just existing off of other people's shadows and other people's corpses and just like, you know, like using other people and sitting back and just like quitting yeah. almost, yeah. but yeah, still I mean, trying, but in a quitting way. And, and I think he does that really well. Yeah. It's just, that's not a super exciting villain. No, so, I, but I don't think it's a villain that warrants as much like, you know, hate. I mean, maybe on the, on the totem pole of all the other villains, he's definitely on the, on the lower, on the bottom yeah. end of that. But, you're absolutely right in that, yeah, he is just a very, like, jaded kind of guy. And when he sees someone like Luffy, it feels like he sees, like, maybe a, a version of himself and before his yeah. hopes and everything was taken from sure. him. And he's like, yeah, you're so naive. Yeah, that's yeah, what we exactly. get towards the end. Exactly. He's like, you know, it's all going to be taken away from you. And that panel was pretty. I was like, oh, this, I'm finally seeing some yeah emotion from this guy. Some, like, longing. Because I feel like a yeah. lot of the villains have that kind of you know, realization when their dreams, because that's the whole thing, like their dreams are taken away. People Absolutely. don't die, dreams die. So it's yeah. Like yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, every uh, every quality, good or bad, has a shadow side, <gasps> you know? And that is, um, I don't really have a thought. No, I, I, no, just you started that. it. I, I just, thought that that was going to be profound if I kept going. Just splice it something in. No one will <laughs> yeah, notice. Yeah, yeah, just a weird <laughs> jump cut, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, the villains in terms of the villains, I mean, obviously yeah, Perona, I think mm -hmm. was a highlight. Highlight. Sure. And, and I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who's like reading along with us necessarily, but I think a lot of people who watch these videos have already kind of read ahead and, and are just like watching for our reactions, but because of just like prep for the video and prep for the cosplay, uh -huh. um, obviously we know that we have not seen the last of Perona. Uh, Which I'm so happy about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So I, I have a Perona cosplay for pre-time skip and post-time skip. Oh. Her post-time skip dress is so pretty. It oh. is. I love her. I mean, we just kind of did this 
from the top up today. But <laughs> There's no, from the waist down, the it waist. is sweat. <laughs> it is sweatpants. It's okay. But I'm wearing pajama pants. Like, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. judging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess the other thing to talk about is um, obviously now that we're in the second half, Zoro's sacrifice or Zoro's, mm. um, I guess Zoro taking in, well, the, the arrival of Kuma and Zoro taking in Luffy's like suffering, pain and suffering. And that was something that I think in terms of like Thriller Bark, if it ever highlight. ranked, yeah, highlight for sure. If it ever ranked on my list in the future, it would be because of that moment. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, well, yeah. too, also, I think that one thing that I obsessed over in that moment isn't just that Zoro. Oh, my gosh. There's so many things, you guys. So, like, <laughs> the fact that... The fact that Zoro was like, nobody will, you know, stop me from fulfilling my goal. Like, this is this is my goal. This is also the goal of, you know, my childhood friend that I've taken on myself. And it's like the most mm -hmm. important thing to him. And then the fact that he then just so willingly sets it aside and is like, doesn't matter anymore. I will die as yeah. long as Luffy can live, right? Like that loyalty. And Sanji did the same thing. He's like, go find yourself another cook because yeah. it's going to be me, right? And, and then the two, I uh, love these two dynamics when Zoro is off and then Sanji is looking for him and Sanji is worried about him mm -hmm. and, and protecting his secret and Brooke protects his secret. And it's just like, you guys, you guys, it's yeah. so good. Well, that's kind of the thing about Zoro that I really love. And, and I, I've talked about this in previous episodes, but uh, when I was younger and I read it, I was like, Sanji's my favorite character. Uh, but now that I'm like older, I think I connect with Zoro. And seeing his character growth, he seems to have some pretty significant character growth from Water 7 to this point. Oh, yeah. In terms of stepping up to be that, you yeah. know, uh, second in command or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's really starting to make... I feel like Nami in the beginning was the one kind of corralling everybody. Mm -hmm. But now Zoro's sort of like stepping into his role and Definitely. really like... You know, keeping Luffy in check and being just like that, 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 that right hand man that you need. If, and being you know. that friend. Yeah. You know, keeping, you know, other people accountable for what they're trying to do and what, you know, they're trying to become. Like, I would always, always say, like, Luffy and Zoro are the ones who have the, like, biggest ambitions of, uh -huh. like, a clear direction of, oh, I want to be the greatest swordsman. I want to be king of the pirates. So, like, them together, like, they're just unstoppable <laughs> just because yeah. they have that clear focus. I mean, we saw it when he was telling Luffy uh, when Usopp was leaving. And he was telling mm -hmm. Luffy, like, you know, you got to just, you got to be this way. If you're a captain, it, this hurts and this is, you know, unfortunate. But you have to be. It has to happen. A beacon for the rest of your crew to kind of look to. And yeah. even even when Usopp was coming back, he was like, unless he says these words, like, you, I mean, he's really, like, Zoro is really becoming, like, I don't know. I, I just have, I've loved more than I think I ever expected to. I've loved to see how he's, again, coming into his role. And it's just, it's just, that's something that's, I think, really, really cool to see. Um, yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. And speaking of that, I wanted to ask you, what's, who's your favorite straw hat Ooh, that we question. know of at this point? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Luffy, but... Mm, okay. That's a little controversial. That, that's a little. <laughs> is it really? Is that controversial? I don't know if it's, it's not controversial. I, I, but I do think that. <laughs> to me, I'm uh, like, well, other than Luffy, right? Like, of course it's Luffy. Uh, my number two is a spoiler. So, I, it's oh. Zoro. Okay, Josh? I mean, you know what? I think Thriller Bark kind of solidified it for me. And, and what was cool, especially, I mentioned in the first video, but it even happens so much more in the second half. Like, seeing them work together as a team and all the combos that they're able to mm. pull off together was just so awesome. Now that we have like the addition of like Frankie and Robin being like full fledged members and Brooke being full fledged members yeah. of, of the crew. Um, but I, I gotta say like Frankie really like in this arc. Really? The, well, because he, <laughs> I mean, he, I, I know that's maybe crazy. No, but no, no. He, he's amazing in this arc. I'm just shocked that you like him this, this, so this early I, on. I, I he's mean, like, yeah, you've been obsessed with him. Yeah. I mean, I've been obsessed with him for a while. I mean, I love his character design. I know people. Did you love the robot thing that he wanted to build? That was hilarious. And Robert was like, I find it embarrassing as a that, person. That was so funny. That was so funny. <laughs> I but, can hear him. He's like, Supa! Yeah, we, but we, I mean, we've talked about it too, how Oda has described, like, if they had familial roles, that he right, would be right. a father figure. But here he, he really is, like, 
especially in terms of Brooke, like he he has empathy. Yeah. He has like he's he has ingenuity. He has, he's strategic. He's I mean, he, he really, really shows off his skills. He really puts it all out there. This I'm, arc. I mean, yeah, he really like kind of like, it, oh man, he's and I mean, I mean, I know I just went off on Zoro like, oh, Zoro, it's great to see. But <laughs> and I think it's it's very close. But I think just in this arc, Frankie slightly kind of nudged before him. Brooke. I mean, that's a, Brooke's great, too. Do you, what do you oh, want good. me to say? I'm so glad you love Brooke. Listen, Brooke is a character that really snuck up on me. When I first met him, I was like, uh, all right, I guess we're doing this. But <laughs> Brooke only gets better. And now, as I was I was flipping through the chapters, I didn't do a proper reread, but as I was flipping through the chapters to make sure I was aware of what we were, were discussing today, yeah. um, I, I was like, oh, man, stuff about Brooke that I just... He was just the quirky skeleton, but now that I have context, I'm like, Brooke, I love you so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of, so do you think you were completely sold on Brooke by the end of Thriller Bark, or are no. you saying that it took a little longer? It took Yeah, a it took for longer you. for me. Uh, well, mm. I think his introduction was so jarring to me, right? Yeah. Like, hello, skeleton, be a part of our crew. Yes. <laughs> you know but I, I, mean? I, I think that was a great way to kind of undercut this, like, hundred what felt like a hundred chapter long <laughs> joining of the crew that Frankie and Robin right, had yeah. you know? totally it's just not what I was used to and <laughs> yeah, I'm used to like yeah. being won over by someone and right. then they join the crew and with Brooke you know his now I appreciate his like burping and farting through meals and <laughs> getting super you know messy and like his gentlemanliness but him being lost at sea for 50 years is actually you know he just Kind of lost he, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I know. So, I mean, I know. But in the time, I was like, what? Why? Why are we doing this? Like, what? What are we doing? <laughs> you know? But now yeah. it's like, my Brooke. Have, did know. you go back when you read this initially? Did you go back and did you watch the episodes that uh, that have Brooke, Brooke's backstory where you get to actually hear the Binks Brew music and everything? I have. I've listened to the song, but uh -huh. no, I haven't watched the episodes. Because something about, and, and you know, I, I think reading, of course, it's like, you know, the source material, right? Yeah. I always think it's the superior kind of choice most of the time. Um, however, there are certain episodes that I pick and choose and feel like I need to watch. And those couple, I felt like I needed to watch to really hear the music and to really see yeah. it all. And the pacing, sure. they really, the anime really does a great job at really kind of slowing things down, letting things breathe, letting you really feel everything, dedicating like a whole, like almost episode two and a episodes, half or two yeah. episodes to Brooke's backstory not rushing things it really like it really made me feel twice as emotional as I did reading yeah. it yeah yeah the music the song playing you know in the the was it the speech dial sound dial oh, like the tone dial yeah tone dial are you kidding me i was bawling my eyes i was crying yeah. so hard I know, and it's he just so makes emotional Oda just makes you yeah, feel Megan for the legitimately crying. <laughs> he yeah. just makes you feel for the skeleton man and things like this in One Piece too. Like you have like the So Gay King song, like we wouldn't have gotten without like the anime. The like, Skypea song. Skypea song. Oh what? Yeah, yeah, it's just so great. These little details. I'm, I'm yeah. obsessed. But Definitely. Brooke is awesome. And his voice actor too. I mean, this is just like to touch on the anime for a second. Mm -hmm. Like his voice actor. I mean, in the in the Japanese, um, the the Japanese uh, sub. You know, he he is so fantastic and he does such a great job at just like capturing brooks essence i mean yeah. he, he really does and i don't know if you knew this maybe you did maybe you didn't but um megan was doing some digging and uh you found out i think i don't know if it was in an sbs or if you found it online brooks age and brooks height oh i guess yeah he's eight eight he's 88 years old when he's introduced mm -hmm. because he was 38 and then he says 50 years later he was or 50 he was stranded for 50 years so 88 which is which is the amount of keys in a piano. I don't know if you knew <gasps> no that. No way. Yeah. How fun. And, and he's 8'8". Eight, eight. And he's 8'8", eight, eight. yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. 8'8", eight, eight. man. Uh, he's I so know. tall. I know. I didn't realize how tall he was Scale until I saw him. so, like, nebulous in one piece. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like well, yeah, you want to talk about nebulous. We're trying to freaking put together this Perona cosplay. And it's like, <laughs> can we get some continuity here? Because no. <laughs> because you know the, the one side the bow looks small the bow looks big the, the crown she looks grows really remember she has that oh, Alice in yeah. Wonderland moment that's true mm -hmm. that's Megan, true Megan we the, never got to hear who your favorite scrap yeah. was oh of course Chopper oh yeah. uh, really <laughs> Chopper's my baby I well, love Drum Island it's probably one of my favorite arcs 
Then we need to talk about the Chopper versus Doc fight, right? Yes. Oh oh my gosh. This was so emotional because it did feel like a great moment where Chopper like grew up a little bit. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. 100%. He, you know, had these like dreams of like what he expected this doctor to be. He heard, you know, all these great things about him. And it's like, you know, when you grow up, you realize like sometimes your heroes aren't always Never, Never meet your heroes. Never meet your heroes. And Chopper did. And that was a bad bad mistake and just seeing how passionate chopper is about his craft and how he wants to move forward and his integrity as a doctor it just shined yeah it just shined and he was great and you 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 know he he kicks ass he kicks ass for sure yeah sure i was so proud of him to stand up to him to yell at him and like stand by his moral ground and denounce him as his hero it was such a good moment for chopper and I feel like Chopper kind of gets sometimes he doesn't get as much shine as he, he doesn't. He Absolutely. doesn't. He's easy to fade into the background. Yeah. He is. And he really stepped up in in this arc and he was a he was a big part of it. In, in um the previous arc, he had that like berserker moment mm-hmm. and but this is like that wasn't Chopper. He didn't have like the same mind or, you know, characteristics as Chopper. He's like this the Hulk. Was, yeah, he was like the Hulk, you know. <laughs> this is like Chopper being like i don't know i just i just felt like i got so much closer to him and uh, oh yeah and cared so much more about him because i mean he was probably thinking about you know his papa yeah you know just yeah. like you know he wishes that he could bring him back but that's not what we're supposed to be doing you know it, mm-hmm. it was so powerful I, and i really do hope chopper gets more moments i'm sure he will i'm sure he will but i, I like you said murphy i think he does tend to it is so easy for him to fade yeah. to the back and i and i kind of hate that Oh, yeah. I mean, he was course. also the one whenever we were fighting uh, Shadow Luffy uh, oars. He was the one that right that detected that yes. yeah. the arm is weak. If you hit the arm. Yeah. 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 So this useful. Is, yeah, absolutely. And this is one of my favorite fights in One Piece. Um, at, at least one of my favorite parts in this section of One Piece, because the crew is completely working together, you know, calling out orders and taking turns and playing off of each other, which we just don't get that much of. No, yeah. no, because they're usually either split up or Zoro sleepy. <laughs> yeah, Zoro sleepy. <laughs> like no, they're I mean, usually all separate. That's but. what I mean about the combos, loving to see how they work together yeah. and how they use strategy and how they actually like, I love that Luffy is brute force, but I also love, I love both. I love that he can be that. I, that's what I loved about the Usopp Perona fight that, like oh, yeah. Usopp amazing fight Such a good her fight. with strategy was so awesome and it's kind of here again but in a team dynamic oh yeah and I really like I I, I absolutely like loved almost all the fights in Thriller Bark like yeah. almost all of them were yeah. so enjoyable absolutely absolutely I think the yeah the Usopp Perona one the big bad fight that went on forever that was completely satisfying at the end even the little fights to me like whenever we face off against um the hell dog what was it called oh the Cerberus, Cerberus? no no no, the, the Cerberus. yeah no that's yeah. right it's called yeah, Cerberus. yeah yeah okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um facing off against that like I, all throughout this arc you have the strong guys going up first and then just easily just being like bad dog you know or whatever and then we have the weaker ones the less you know the powerhouses that come through and really have to to struggle and i or actually the other way around the weak ones go first and then the powerhouses Mm -hmm. sorry uh but anyway like even like these little confrontations that we come across i think are just so brilliantly drawn and the way he kind of shows the different balance of, of power dynamics between the characters and then allowing even the characters that aren't the you know the big strong ones even nami got an amazing yes. scene and yeah. you know chopper got his amazing scene and um Brooke brought the salt. Oh, oh yeah, that was great. That was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like even just those little moments within the fights, they're all satisfying to me in this one. Yeah, I think even more so, I hate to keep you know comparing it to Skypea, but you know, just for the sake of people saying they're both breather arcs, I, I think I far more enjoyed these fights than, oh, I, than, yeah. I, than I did um, Skypea. Definitely. 100% agree because with that. Like it was like either a serious fight where like, you know, a character developed like the chopper fight, Nami. And then but also we had these like hilarious little fights of just like bits mm-hmm. and, and and comedy. That's why it differed so much from Skypea because it was just like like I was laughing every other mm-hmm. page. It yeah. was hilarious. And it was just so 
it, it, like like Murphy said, it was just so different and fun, and like I never would have thought that I would have seen zombies in one yeah, piece like ever right. in or, my mind. Yeah, right. maybe ghosts, maybe ghosts, but not to the extent of like Perona and right. having these zombie stuffed animals. Like, what a great yeah, what a great arc. I mean. Yeah. yeah, I will say I do think that it's fair to call it a breather arc just because I think that as far as the big emotional intense things that happen, mm. this is a lot more gag centric. It's a lot more fun, even though it's spooky, it's lighthearted and we still get the emotions that you expect yes. from One Piece. We still get the fights that you expect. We still get the character moments. We still get all that you expect from One Piece, but in a lighter way than what we've been getting and between again you know you obviously don't know what's coming but the two big arcs that it's that it's sandwiched between yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, again I, I know we can't give too much away but just uh, and I'll be vague but just being able to not dodge everything I feel like there were some big bombs sort of dropped at the end of this arc specifically mm. with the uh, you know uh, Lola's Mom. Mom and um, the paper, the I think it's called life paper. Yeah. Um, Vivir, I think it's Vivir. Yeah, Vivir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I do, obviously I know that the paper and Ace and all that is, is going to come into play in a major way. But I do think that there's some other things. I'm trying to be vague, but I do think what? there are some other things that we're going to Do you already that. know? Do you know spoilers? What there, the there's, heck? There's, there's two things I know. One, <laughs> one I... I one, I got, um, what do you call it? I got drive-by spoiled. Drive-by spoiled? I got drive-by spoiled. That Is that was... where they come in a car and then they, they show a <laughs> picture of what, they show the open the manga yeah. and they're like, yeah. and yeah. they just drive by really slow. And you go, no, it, no. They print it really big. Yeah. It's yeah. a really specific thing that happened to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm really yeah. surprised you yeah. It happens a lot in our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so too much. No, I was, in a, I was in a figure shop, like a, uh, an anime figure shop, and mm. I was in the section where they had all the One Piece figures. Oh, and, that's how you, that's easy. And someone was talking to their friend, and they made a comment about a character and their fate. And oh. uh, I was just like, well, okay, guess I know that now. Um, I want to know what it is, though. I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, earmuffs, earmuffs, yeah, earmuffs. Yeah, earmuffs, earmuffs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I just, for the sake it's of... Okay. Is there I'm, anything no, you no, could... No, it's okay. Is I'll tell you after you the could, video. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you after. Um, and then the other thing is I know that there's a character that, that they're dealing with now who has a name, Mama, or, you know, something like that. I don't know if that's I think much. I know. No, I think I know what you're talking about. And again, Murphy, you don't have to, uh, you know, <laughs> deny or agree. I don't know. But I, I, I know. I didn't even like, know there was a mom in One Piece. I didn't even know where how how kids came about. <laughs> oh shoot! What what are moms? Uh, yeah, That's true. What are moms? What are moms? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I so I don't know how big they're gonna they're gonna be in the future, but I do mm. think that there's some significant stuff happening at the end here. Um, obviously, especially with the introduction of Kuma too, and another getting to yes. see another warlord. Did not expect to get to see two warlords in jam this packed. arc. Yeah, jam packed. A lot of it is, um, you know thrown at you at the very end you get a lot of like really like heavy hits at the end of this arc i feel like with the zora moment the kuma moment the you get to see the the brooke backstory moment like i mean we get introduced to this thing that is going to be a reoccurring thing i'm sure uh, p pacifista, pacifista oh yeah yeah what yeah. a crazy <laughs> what a crazy thing to just be like here you go this is a warlord but we're also i'm also kind of like a cyborg i'm like huh and this vega this Wait, vega punk guy Vega, Vega Punk, who's been name dropped in the previous arc already. Murphy, is it also fun for you to hear people talk about things that you are completely aware of? <laughs> no, I'm so afraid I'm gonna let something slip. <laughs> We're like, oh. <laughs> I know you guys are like, don't just don't don't, don't react, don't say don't anything, <laughs> don't, yeah, don't make eye contact. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the footage. I'm gonna go through everything. And I'm gonna study all your expressions. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I just do feel like we're getting some really world, significant world building things happening here. And, and mm -hmm. Kuma's introduction, I think he is definitely up there in terms of when we met um, now Kiji, who I fell in love with. And he's kind of a kind of a hunk, if we're being honest. Oh, um, top. And now, I mean, Kuma's like, I mean, Kuma's a different kind of. Uh, of of I wouldn't say hunk necessarily, <laughs> but I would let him. Chunk? <laughs> well, he's a chunk for sure. <laughs> He's a for sure chunky guy. <laughs> He's a broad guy. He's a broad man. Or not man. Android. Um, a bear. Man. Man android bear. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but like in terms of like, I'm trying to figure out how to word this without giving too much away uh, or, or making it easier for you to answer without giving too much away. Mm. Like your introduction to Kuma, obviously you, you see more of him as it goes on, but like I, I could have never predicted. Megan was like kind of guessing. We were looking at oh, yeah. pictures. We were kind of guessing what his devil fruit ability was. And she's like, oh yeah, I feel like when he makes people disappear, he for sure has like some sort of teleport uh, devil fruit or has some sort of, you know. Yeah, because he asked a question like, where do you want to go on vacation? He has the vacation, then, vacation fruit. Yeah, vacation, vacation fruit. <laughs> and then uh, Frodo's like, I want to go somewhere, you know, that's like dark and in a mansion or whatever. And he just like poofs her away. And I was like, that's so lit. He just sent her where she wanted to go. But I don't know. <laughs> but but then you realize what it is. Like, what was sort of your reaction initially to him? Because Brooke, it took you a long time to be won over by Brooke. Kuma, were you in love with the moment you met him? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I had a big old theory that like Kuma is secretly on our side and he's sending everybody mm. to their favorite vacation spots on purpose. <laughs> and like he's just trying to trick the government into thinking that he's working for them. But actually everything he's doing is, you know, of good intentions. And I had like this big, I don't even remember at all, elaborate theory about him. Um and that is all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> he is an excellent character. I'll say that. Well, um, we don't want to take too much more of your time. Uh, I do want to ask you, and I don't know if Megan has any other questions, maybe some final thoughts before before mm. we uh, let you go. I wanted to ask, I guess, again, it's really tricky, but in terms of like, in terms of ranking this arc, yes. Thriller Bark, yes. maybe maybe where it, where, where it stands that you're caught up in, 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 in the entirety of one piece. And then maybe if it's, if you can't answer this too, up until this point, all the arcs up until this point, do you remember where it might've ranked for you when you had only read, you know, this portion of the mm. series? Um, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it totally does. I think that I know that Arabasta and, and water seven were my two, um, mm -hmm. water seven first and then Arabasta as far as, as far as sagas go. Mm. Um, and I think it was, I don't know. I, I know it was above Skypiea, but I don't remember exactly how I rank it. Um, I think it's probably somewhere in the middle for me as far as now, uh, mm. maybe like lower middle. But for me, I, I'll say it this way. If I'm just trying to have a good time and, and reread something real quick, it's going to be Thriller Bark. Like if mm. I'm just trying to... Wow. Yeah, if, 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 I'm, if I'm trying to go through the emotions or if I'm trying to have like the impact, if I'm trying to remember what One Piece means to me, I'll grab a couple other arcs. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to go into like the lore and, re and remember how complex and brilliant and well thought out the series is for me, I'm going to grab a couple other arcs. But if I'm just trying to have a good time and just hang out, it's going to be Water 7 and it's going to be Thriller Bark. Those are going to be my two. And wow. Fishman Island too, but oh and wait, cut that, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's kind of. We know. Yeah, we know. They say it in this they arc. Say they it. say it. They say that's where they're going. Just like Luffy kept saying, "I want to meet his talking skeleton." And I was like, "Okay, Luffy, I see you." And, and yeah, people keep yeah, people yeah. keep talking about mermaids too. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, just yeah, say those other? two. Don't, don't, just, in <laughs> case, just in case there's somebody watching that has it. Yeah, right, I right. We'll bleep it. A favorite thriller bark. Um, Favorite straw hat. I think we we nailed them all. Yeah, I think that's a great. Because I want to ask more questions, but obviously there's. I can't. Yeah, I can't I do it it's to hard. myself. I can't do it to anyone else who doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so it is hard to like ask any questions about. I mean, I think that sums it up perfectly. I mean, um, obviously we haven't. Uh, if you're watching this, we haven't recorded our, our beat by beat like kind of walkthrough yet. But I kind of agree. If I want to read something fun. If I want to get just like laughs and if I yeah. want to just read some great fights and see some great action, then I think I'm going to just probably gravitate to Thriller Bark. And like you said, Murphy, you said it so perfectly there. That's what that arc is for. And there are other arcs for other things. And it's the beauty of One Piece. You got a lot of you got a lot of diversity. You got a lot of things to variety. choose from. A lot of variety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could variety. tell Oda. You, you could tell Oda really uh, dedicated a lot to this arc. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, he really fleshed Your arms it. Hurt. Fleshed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he fleshed really, I had to stretch exactly. for that one. You got a gum gum fruit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For real. Oh, that was good. Yeah, maybe Moria needs to stretch her shadow out. For oh, that no. One. Oh. Moria, more like Boria. Oh. <laughs> 
okay. You saved them all for the end. You saved them all for the I end. I had to get them out. I had to get them out. I'm um, glad you guys enjoyed this arc so much, though. It does yes. get a lot of beef for. It does. I don't. I don't know. It does have. It has a pretty big low moment with Sanji, mm. and it is super different from anything else. And if you're not into gothic stuff, I can understand why this would be like. Can we move on? But I man, this is such a fun arc, and I'm really glad that you guys loved it too. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was obsessed. I mean, I, you know, I love. Also, too, like it was very Nightmare Before Christmas. It was very like you said, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, Scooby Doo, yeah. Scooby Doo, mystery, like zombies. I mean, I'm just obsessed with all that stuff too. So it was so easy for me to just be like, oh my god, we're doing this in one piece. Oh my gosh, we're doing. This. Yeah, <laughs> we get this one. Oh, what I know, are you me doing? too. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I really feel like it was like a perfect, the perfect length too. Yeah. Was, yeah, I mean, it was pretty like long in the scheme of things, but it was, I mean, so funny, so much fun to read, Brooke. His whole backstory, I mean, Laboon, I, I, come on. Yeah, well, we'll on. go through it a little more yeah. beat by beat later, but uh, yeah. we got to let Murphy go. Thank you, Murphy, for taking the time out of your day. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much here. for having me. Um, you were absolutely great. Uh, I mean, we'd love to have you back, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anytime. Maybe, we'll, maybe when we get caught up, maybe when we get a little further. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, you've been a delight. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much, guys. It was great meeting you. Yes, it was. Fellow Thriller Bark lovers, we got to stick together. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we'll see you guys in a second in our beat by beat um, discussion. I was I started high. Beat, and then I, yeah. And then I ended. I started high energy and I ended. It fizzled out. I was trying to think if you were doing like a pun or something. No. Yeah, you don't. That <laughs> this <laughs> is And we are back. Wow. Murphy Napier. What a delight. I know. Huh? So much delight. fun. Um, what do you think? Sunglasses sunglasses on or sunglasses off for the rest of the episode? What do you think? I like them on. On? Then they're staying on. Now it's time for our beat by beat discussion. We're going to keep it kind of brief. We're going to, you know, kind of kind of blow through it because we got a lot to talk about and we want to keep all the Murphy stuff in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's start going through it where we left off was, um, at the fight with Zoro and the undead swordsman who is of course from, uh, another series that Oda worked on wanted, mm -hmm. which is also canon in the one piece, uh, universe. That's pretty cool. Yeah, super cool. Um, this fight, again, was really, really cool. It was a lot of fun. It, um, I think the highlight for me was obviously Zoro getting his sword. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the fight itself, in terms of like all the fights that take place in Thriller Bark, like this wasn't at the top of my list, but it was still a great fight. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I think like the chopper one might have been better. Um, and it might have been one of the highlights for me personally. Um, and then obviously towards the end, like we get that crazy, humongous, amazing fight. But yeah, this is probably my least. Uh, well, actually, no, I scratched that Sanji. Yeah, I mean, even no, even though that the, the Sanji fight is controversial, um, it was at least, you know, I think parts of it were, were funny to me, parts <laughs> yeah. of it, even though that is a controversial statement in itself. Um, uh, but after that, that... What I think was also really cool too is that Brooke realizes that the swordsman wasn't even giving it his all. Yeah. Every time he was fighting Brooke, he was not even giving it his all. And that I think just seeing how that kind of hits Brooke, yeah. that was kind of crazy. He kind of realizes it and says to, I think, Frankie, who's there with him, like, oh my God, this guy was not even this guy was not I even got fighting my booty me. kicked. Yeah. I got red. Dude, I look yeah. like a freaking skull and crossbones from Jackass over here, dude. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Hi, my name is Brooke the Musician, and this is this is the undead swordsman fight. <laughs> um but that was a cool moment for Brooke, Brooke too, I think, realizing um how you know how how 
important that having the straw hats around can be and how how strong they really are. Oh, yeah. I really like I did like aspects of this fight, too. Like, I do like how usually every time we get like a swordsman fight with Zoro and he fights another swordsman, it's always, you know, ends with dignity. Like well, they're yeah. never they're never like, I hate you and I'm going to hate you for the rest of my life. It's like you are powerful and I respect that. And I'm going to grant you like access. Like, it's just so funny to me. I actually loved that about this fight. I actually loved that the swordsmen um, went out with honor and how there yeah. still seemed to be, this is where we get like the inkling of their being. Cause we know that there's obviously there's a connection with the shadows to their owners. Yes. But that there's still, this is where we get an inkling that there's still some sort of essence of the original soul or the original mm -hmm. like personality in the body outside mm -hmm. of just their physical fighting abilities. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And there's just like a level, like there's always a level of respect mm -hmm. and I thought that was like done really well. Yeah. And of course at the end of this fight, this fight results in Brooke finally getting his shadow back. Yay. You know what that means? What? He's ready to set sail. Uh, you know what that means? He's now a pimp named, named Brooke, Brooke. Got, got his, his shadow, shadow back. back. I'm a pimp named Shadow Back. That's better. Yeah, that's better. That's a little tighter. I'm a pimp named Shadow Back. Um, this is when we go go to the Hogback and uh, Chopper Nami yes, fight. Yes, I love this. I mean, I kind of talked about it briefly earlier with uh murphy but this was probably like one of my favorite chopper moments for sure he really yeah. is like obviously he's the youngest i think yeah of the straw hat so he still has a lot to learn and it is especially cool to see him kind of learn that lesson um with this person that he looked up to realizing that you know sometimes people can grow into being bad people yeah i mean this is this is like a, a highlight of this second part for yeah. sure for me and just like for Chopper's character. I mean, this is like one of the coolest moments he's gotten. Oh yeah. Making a mockery of point. people's lives. I mean, he's just laying it on him. Like it was just, yeah. He's saying just because people can move around doesn't mean that they, that they're free. Like oh they, yeah. And he had one of the best lines. I, and I, I wrote it down. It was, I was like, Oh my gosh. You know, Hogback's like, I get, I need people, I need these zombies, they do my bidding, they do everything for me. And Chopper just goes like, our captain can get monsters, cyborgs, beasts, perverts, and extremely pessimistic people to work under him. Like, that just goes to show how good a captain he is. And I was just like... That's what I mean, dude. This, like, back half of this arc has so Chopper. many crazy panels. So many crazy like group moments like that was a really cool line from Chopper when the when the when the the, the crew's getting back up from the rubble from the dust mm -hmm. and they're assembling and they keep getting up you knock them down they keep getting right the frick back up mm -hmm. dude and it was just so awesome and the line where they're saying like you know we're gonna show our, we're gonna fight our captain's shadow and show him what our crew's power. Well, what about Luffy when he goes rubber always bounces back and he's like hey I got something to say to my shadow too. If you want to be the shadow of the king of the pirates, then you better get over here. Get over. I mean, I'm, I mean, like, I'm are you kidding me? Like, like that rubber bones backline. I was like, Luffy. Yeah, this is like badass moment after badass. It moment. really is, and I was just. I mean, this was definitely like one of the highlights for me for Chopper. His character development. I mean, like we said, he kind of gets thrown to the wayside sometimes. We saw a little bit of him. Um, you know, last arc with the whole beast mode thing, but this is where he really shined. And it was like so much more personal to him because he's a doctor and because he has had a loved one pass away. So yeah. Yeah. he's like, of course I'd want them back, but like it wouldn't be them. Wow. You know, and that's the whole thing with like Sindri. That's why he kind of got triggered because it's like, of course it's her body, but like it's not her. Yeah. And yeah, right. Chopper's like, okay, would I really want that? Would I really want to bring uh the doctor back but yeah. it wouldn't be him like you know and hogback of course hogback would be the some sort of freak stalker who, yeah. would, who would be just trying to get sindri he's like i had all the accolades i yeah. had all the freaking notoriety and she still didn't want me it's like because you your name is hogback dude yeah. change your name like yeah. doctor you know doctor I, I i don't know dr smith or something back I don't know. hog dr back hog that's pretty good 
Yeah, just switch it around. Dude, you're a master surgeon, dude. Do some surgery on your name, dude. Yeah. A hog bag? I thought oh, he, here's my fiance. Hog bag. <laughs> I thought he was going to be the one who ended up killing her, but he didn't kill her. Oh, that would have been a crazy twist, too. No, he just kind of waited and then was like, oh, I'll go dig her up, I guess. Uh, Yeah, what a freak, dude. Um, and That was sad, too. I mean, her whole backstory and then her kind of coming to... You know, well, yeah, I mean, that really was, feel again, her body. And she was like, I can't move. That's where we get, you know, finally more about what remains of mm -hmm. a soul in a body. And, and that's just such an interesting concept to me. I think, you know, what what is a soul? What determines like what determines like who you are? Yeah. Is there some of your essence? Is, is like, are you your physical form is there some sort of you mm -hmm. know part of your essence always in your physical form you know i don't know i mean this was crazy to see like a chopper and i think it was was it was it robin or was it uh i think it was nami uh, or chopper and robin um just they're pleading to sindri they're pleading like yeah if there's anything left of of who you once were left then please like you know this isn't you wouldn't want this. This is what the owner of this body. They He's like, want uh, this. I was kind of getting intense. He's like, well, how would your family see you now? You think your family would like you being this way? It's like, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, like crazy. poor lady, poor Sindri. I really felt that. And then her like smile too. Like, oh, oh so yeah. heartbreaking. When they look and they kind of see her uh, zombie form and then like her original past form and and her just like kind of smiling behind yeah like, when ors is about to like crush her i mean this like, is this damn. is even right here too where she's just kind of like yeah i mean maybe it was when ors broke through but like just that moment of getting to see that there is still a, a lingering bit of her soul in there and uh man that was a really i think powerful moment too not as pow i think it maybe it gets kind of lost in everything else that happens because there's so many crazier things that happen at the yeah. end of this arc but that was a really cool moment and a really cool panel too yeah i really like that um then of course we get and and what leads to like ores breaking in is we uh, you know i love the combos baby i gotta write down all the combos dude. we get that freaking chopper robin combo suplex move dude. Uh -huh. what the freak that, you know, she, Robin was like, I'm going to make you a ladder out of hands, basically. Chopper's going to, you know, sail up into the freaking air and suplex this, this man, this doctor into the ground. He suplexed a doctor, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, he got to go. He had to go. More like do doctor freaking broke back instead of hog back because he's going to break his back. He's going to break his back. You know, there are two kinds of broke back, you know. <laughs> One of them is a mountain that I go to from time to time. And the other one is when you break someone's back, uh, which can also happen in the <laughs> mountains. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, um, cutting back to Orr's wrecking through the mansion. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Nami gets taken again. again. Absolutely. Can you just? She's really pulling a Daphne here. Oh, she is pulling a little bit of a Daphne, huh? Yeah, she keeps getting taken. Yeah, she's like, uh, "Where's freaking Liam Neeson? Am I right, guys?" Yeah. <laughs> he, I've, I just felt like that was a really bad I a joke, so I was selling it I, uh, by, I was by laughing at it. I have a particular set of skills. Uh, particular is that Liam Neeson? Yeah. Uh, I did. I was. I don't know why I did the accent. It just kind of happened. I mean, he He's does like, kind of have, have a particular accent. set of skills. You know? That was better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first one. I, I have a particular like, set of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where is he? Basically, is what we're saying. Where is he? All right. And Nami's taken again. Um, Nami, Nami. Nami was taken as uh, almost as many times as there were taken movies. True. There were too many. True, too many. Too many. And I liked. I mean, during this time, obviously, Perona is like coming to, and she's like, "We, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, I don't care enough about Hogback. I don't care enough. That's why I kind of like her, and I have a feeling, you know, like we said, we know that she does come back, and I have a feeling she'll. She's more of a like an anti-hero character. I, I would love that. I would love Doesn't that. Doesn't it seem that way? I mean, she's not necessarily taking everything she's doing too seriously. She's not really hurting people. I mean, she's kind of like mixing animals together. But she's <laughs> not necessarily doing anything else. Not as severe as Hogback or even, you know, Moria. So yeah, she's I just like she kind of just joined up for the Maybe for the sake of just joining up. I don't know. Yeah. She doesn't. Yeah, you're right. She does seem like she might end up being some sort of anti-hero. Yeah. That people kind of, some people kind of root for. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I kind of see in. Um, but also we should say that Ors has now, you know, come completely under Moria's control and he put their 
the straw hat's bounty is like on his arm. He got freaking yeah, yatted. Yeah, he got he yatted. Stuck him to his it's arm. It's like when you cheat on a test and you're trying to remember, or you're like having a speech you have to write on your hand. Yeah. He's like, oh, uh, that one's a uh, Luffy. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, good job, Oars. And he's like, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he, uh, this, the, the fight that ultimately happens with Oars, like he, he was a cool, I think, um, you know, he was a cool, like, finale to this this uh mm -hmm. this arc but what i guess i didn't really like about it or if i do have like one kind of nitpick it wasn't just like it was like a lot of back and forth dude it was like okay oars has the upper hand and knocks out the straw hats and I now agree. the straw hats freaking knock out oars and then oars gets back up and knocks the straw hat and it was just that over yeah and i know over and, and even like they're making jokes about it too like even zoro like all of them are passed out and they're like how are they up again yeah ready to fight again and then Zoro gets up again. They're like, what is this guy undead too? I don't know what's more undead. The zombies or Zoro? I mean, they s literally say that. And it's just like funny. Like They go back and forth, back and forth. And it is that also with Moria too. It kind of feels like as I was like getting to the end, I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's wrap this up like, yeah. with the fighting. I was like, there has to be a winner. It's getting too out of hand here. <laughs> it really is. And even with Shadow Luffy, I was like, okay, finally, 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 we get, we get there. Get, oh, not yet. Oh, not yet. Yeah. Oh, it was like, oh. Moria has one more trick up his sleeve. Yeah. And, oh my God. Another one. Like that's, that's like kind of what it felt like. And that's, you know, that tends to be sort of uh, a, a formula that that happens in in anime and manga and shown in for anime and manga. sure this is probably the most i felt it though yeah and even I felt with it like luffy fighting you know anel or naru it yeah. was kind of like every time he learned something new in order to beat him this time it was just the same type of things yeah, 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 yeah. over and over. So it wasn't that interesting of a fight. And it was like, he's so massive mm -hmm. and Chopper, that was the coolest part is Chopper finding out the weakness and finding out they have to like freeze him. And uh, you know, he's probably walking around naked and they're like, how are we going to go? We're going to uh, get beaten by this loser. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was, that was the most interesting part of the fight. Everything else it was kind of like, okay, we can, Let's let's speed this up here, you know. And, yeah. and I, again, like the Straw Hats, we really see them fight as a group, which was cool. Get trampled as a group, which was cool. Yeah. Uh, live as a group, die as a group. Live as a group, die as a group. And I did like, um, like all of them, like gearing up. They're like, we gotta get. The, what's his weakness? Chopper's like, I'm gonna get him. Like we just have to figure this out. And then Usopp's just like, I am so scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the one. Like, he's like, I am terrified. I am so terrified. Usopp has some new gadgets that I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna put a little star by that Ooh. because his new gadget was super cool. His new gadget was awesome, and then also Frankie's stairwalk. His stairway to heaven. Stairway to heaven. Stairwalk. Yeah. Someone made a meme, and it was like Frankie was playing Fortnite before anyone else, <laughs> and it really was that he was like building out of nothing. Yeah, dude. He killed it. That's what I'm saying, man. Super. Frankie kind of, yeah, Frankie's definitely super. <laughs> and Murphy said the funniest part, too, is when they're trying to do that robot. When Frankie oh, puts Chopper yeah. and they're all trying to like go on top of each other. And she goes, that's so embarrassing. Don't ever ask me to, what was the word? Uh, dang it. I forgot. It was so funny. She never asked me to like, um, dang it. Something up again. Yeah, I forgot pretty much, what it yeah, was. Like, yeah, don't ever ask me to do that. Don't ask me to like, you know, it it's humiliating <laughs> basically. I'm not doing that. Uh, and I, you I know, think she was a little embarrassed because Frankie Robin ship. She's like, yeah, I can't. I like, can't be that do it. Not here. Not here. Not here, Frankie. You know, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Not I here. mean, after I've after I felt his balls, you know, yeah. I just haven't been able to see him the same. Things have been kind of different between me and Frankie. I can't get that close to him. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, but uh, yeah, this was. <laughs> This was uh, this was a lot of back and forth, but you know ultimately Nami ends up kind of saving herself in a way, even though Sanji mm -hmm. did a lot of the the heavy lifting, I guess. But she's able to use her climate baton and um, electrocute Absalom as well. And there's even a funny you know little panel or you know blurb where a character is like, yeah, I mean he was already pretty weak from that last. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't know when the best time to talk about the. I just wrote it here. I don't know when the best time to talk about sort of the cover pages would be, but I don't want to forget to talk um, about those and not to go into like crazy detail. Um, but uh, cause I think a lot of our focus is on just talking about what's happening in the, in the main story, even mm -hmm. though those cover pages do 
intertwine with the main story and become very crucial to the main story. Um, it was just like, it's just like this whole like saga in El and Aru saga is so like, <laughs> crazy man i mean he's looking at freaking hieroglyphics and stuff dude i mean he's freaking in, he's freaking like Indi space indiana jones dude indiana jones in space it's so insane how detailed they are too and that's what you yeah. were saying last episode you're like so distracted you're like okay i have to keep i have to keep track of this too i wish it could just be its own little book yeah for real because <laughs> i want to know it's just like you're taking in so much information and it's like okay okay this happened this happened thriller park oh, okay and uh, oh shoot okay the muskrats oh, oh. <laughs> and i have a theory um you know excuse us for being you know a little behind theory. but as of this recording something major happened in the one piece world i'm scared i don't want to get spoiled and i think it's the muskrats dude the muskrats came back the muskrats came the musk back the space from space civil from war, war muskrats came back from the moon <gasps> the muskrats with their muskets came back yeah yeah they came back from space and 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 now Inaru is freaking riding on them and they're freaking they got a rocket ship this and, it's a, and it's a sail major muskrat to, to, oh, I think so. Isn't it ground control like a thing? This is ground control to Major Muskrat. Yeah, we're working on it. Uh, we're working on it. Uh, do you got another Slide. cool? Do you got another really cool song though that we want to reveal? A little <laughs> yeah, bit later? I'm not sure. That might be. I don't. Who knows where that's going to end up being in the episode? But yeah, um, we'll see. Cause this is thriller. Woo thriller park. It's uh, it's maybe so we'll fun. transition into it at the end and then. It'll be the video. We it's don't know. It's so fun. It's so fun that I can't <laughs> wait. Um, so this is where, and we kind of already kind of went through all this stuff. Like I said, we're going through it kind of fast, but the Straw Hats, you know, fight the shadow of their captain, a lot of back mm -hmm. and forth. Um, and we finally get introduced to Kuma. This is when Perona's trying to escape, but Bartholomew, Bartholomew, Kuma Bartholomew. Arrives. And it was he was kind of scary. Yeah, he was pretty scary, dude. He looked like Perona's face was like she was like And were you take yeah, she was yeah, she was shocked. She was shook. To her core. Um, do you uh we watched the anime and we kind of just want I wanted to hear what this man sounded like. Were you kind of you seem kind of shocked when you heard his uh Yeah, it was voice softer, acting. softer than I expected. I but, mean he's a soft man, dude. He's got soft pa paws. Mmm, paw. You think um, you think whenever any you think whenever somebody says something kind of like, you know, maybe uh, that they're uncomfortable with, or that could be taken away that wasn't intended, uh -huh. he holds out his hand and he goes, "Pause." <laughs> he goes, "Talks to the paw." Yeah, because the freaking sunglasses don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. I don't think he has I, sunglasses. I, I, have I think those are his eyes. He goes, "I have a paw, and I follow the law." That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol <laughs> is Paw Kuma. Here. Paw Patrol is here, dude. Um, yeah, he's, he's... He's a very good character. Oh, he's a very, very good character. I love him. I love his design, like we said with Murphy. It, I did... On paper, I'm like, this should not work. It works. He's so cool. Obviously, you know that there's something... Not sinister about him, but you know he's very powerful. Because oh, yeah. Perona's reaction is just like, this is... I'm done. I'm so done. Uh, and we yeah, kinda, she's like, I'm, even though they're like on the same side, she's like trying to escape. And he's just like, where do you think you're going? Where do you want to go on vacation? And she's like, oh, maybe somewhere twisted. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And then he poofs her. Well, yeah. And that's kind of like, again, what we talked about a little bit with Murphy, just like what his devil fruit ability really was. And then getting to see kind of the implications of what it allows him to do later mm -hmm. was just like such a, again, interesting and awesome and really uh, unique yeah. way to depict or show or just, just have this power work. I mean, that it can actually, like we see later, like reject everything and mm -hmm. it can reject feeling emotion uh, pain like all these things it's like well, that's a that's an interesting concept it is and it's like that really came from the pop off fruit like that's what i'm saying that's what i love about oda and what he does i mean he takes these fruits that you might think would be lame or or you know maybe and maybe in the hands or in the paws of somebody else ah. it wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to use it as well and that's what i think is super interesting is that I think a lot of times it's it's not the fruit that you get, but kind of like how you use it in a lot of ways, mm. you know, um, it's, you know, and it's like the motion of the ocean kind of thing. That's yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> speaking of devil fruits. Oh God, um, getting choked up. Yeah. Uh, speaking of devil fruits too, <laughs> that you saw that in an SBS. Oda had kind of hinted at. Oh yeah, he said uh, pretty much like because someone asked about the devil fruit and they asked about Luffy's devil fruit and they said how could it be um you know discovered if only one person can have it at a certain time is it mean multiple people have it at the same time like how does that work and oda basically said like no one person can have the same devil fruit at the same time or that ability and he says and we're i'm going to introduce a character next volume that will explain how devil fruits work which is kind of like I mean, we've kind of got hints and hints and hints of, uh, you know, exposition about how these things are able to work, but not to the extent I think it's going to go. We're finally going to get some big questions asked, maybe where they come from. Uh, what's the deal with that? I mean, it is like, it's limitless. I have no idea. It's Vegapunk, dude. We're going to meet Vegapunk, dude. I'm calling it right Vegapunk. Now. You think that he's going to explain? Yeah. Probably. Because he's, he's putting. Got a, he's, he's got a brain that's 500 years more advanced than everybody else. Well, he's putting the devil fruits into inanimate objects. That's kind of, I mean, in a sense, that's kind of what a, uh, you know, pacifista is. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, and that's what I'm really interested to find out more about, too. For um, sure. But yeah, she gets Perona gets blipped, dude. She gets blipped. She, she gets, gets snapped. Snapped, dude. She gets gone, and she gets got. Really, oh. and Nami watches it all kind of happen, and she runs to go warn everybody or tell everybody about it. Um, Luffy gets tricked, led into the forest by Moria's shadow, and Kuma. You find out why Kuma's there. Kuma's there to talk to Mor Moria about you know Crocodile's successor. Who Which is Blackbeard. is Blackbeard. I was like, oh. And just like the, how they're talking to like, and they're both like the same size. Like they're huge. They're huge creatures. Huge I wouldn't even say men. Yeah, they're, they're huge people. They're Not insane. even people. And it was just interesting to hear them talk like that. Like it's just business. And he asked them like, where do you want to go on vacation? He goes, don't, you know, don't do that with me. I yeah, know he's like, I know how your power works, dude. Yeah, and even, you know, underestimating the straw hats is always so funny. He goes, I'm just here to supervise, you know, we've had two get wiped out. He goes, well, that's not going to be me. Do you think that I can't handle myself? Do you think that I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't handle my own in my own, uh, you know, uh, island? He's like, no, I'm just telling you this is how it is. And Well, that's kind of what, like sends moria into action is mm -hmm. he's like it's his ego he's like you think mm -hmm. you really think i can't do this weaklings which again is what i really like about it because again luffy's pit against a warlord of the sea crocodile i think ultimately was he was able to defeat with his own power and yeah. his own ability but here he's kind of relying on the shadows of of all these other people the to shadows do. and also the straw hats i mean for in sure general. for sure mm -hmm. for sure and, you know, it, it just does go to show you that, like, the stakes get higher and the deeper they go into into the the, the new world is, is what it's called. Right. Yeah. Um, the stronger these people get. For sure. And their enemies get. Um, but that that interaction was really cool to see. Uh, after that, we finally get to see a little bit of Usopp's. And I don't know if we're talking about the same thing but i i love this thing it's a small thing but just that that he is just like batman with all of his gadgets mm -hmm. moria ends up piloting oars which was kind of crazy um <laughs> and brooke shows up with some salt but usopp reveals his new contraption called the stag beetle oh yeah and i just love how you know things are kind of things are kind of planted and then they're 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 dropped and implied to have one way of being used mm. and then chapters later you kind of forget about it mm -hmm. and it's used again in in a way more creative way i guess or in a way you didn't expect which was at first you're thinking okay yeah it's to catapult this huge bag of salt into <laughs> um you know or's mouth but then later when that ultimately doesn't work when they band together again it He's freaking shooting straw hats out of it, dude. He's shooting yep. Frankie out of it. And I'm like, that is so sick. Yeah, that was awesome. And it's just a giant slingshot. But I mean, just like, I love how resourceful Usopp be staying. He be staying and he's just growing and growing. Like I said, we said in the last episode, like that moment when he beat, you know, ultimately Perona, it was just such a triumph for him because that was, you know, realistically, like one of the first people he's beaten 
you know, writer, I, I would, I would, I would say that beaten like on his own completely. And yeah, yeah, the straw sure. hats left him to his own devices and was just like, you can handle this. No problem. Like go for it. Usopp, not sniper King. Yeah. I'm oh, sniper yeah. King. So gay King. Uh, you know, it's not just like you go for it. It's no Usopp. You can handle this. Right. Like that was such an important moment for him. And I think that he's really looking at his strengths now and, and able to realize how resourceful he is. And I think that, you know, Frankie being on the team also helped him out too. Like, of course, Frankie's an animal and a like crazy man. He's a cyborg, but he is able to build stuff on his yeah, own they too. Kind of piggy, they're, they're, they're piggybacking off their, uh, each other's abilities kind of. In yeah. A way. Like, yeah. So that's kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. They're a great duo. Um, and we get to see again, like all of them fight together and it is really fun. It is a back and forth most of the time during this moment, these moments. But, you know, it was cool to see Nightmare Luffy that's, you know, coming up right now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's actually where we're at at this point mm-hmm. in the story right now. Um, yeah, Luffy. I think this was another really interesting concept that was introduced where Luffy meets like the victims association or the yeah. victims club in, in the forest or whatever. Yeah. And they tell him like, you're our pretty much that he's, he's Obi-Wan to them, dude. He's their, their only hope. Yeah. And they have to, they say that Savior. they're going to yeah tell him how these like shadow abilities work and that they can, they've actually captured shadows and they can put them in him and he can gain their strength and gain their ability. They are only to able to sustain two to three, but he ends up being able to sustain a hundred. However, it's only 10 minutes. Got a hard limit on it. 10 minutes yeah that's that's a long time you can do a lot in 10 minutes <laughs> you can do a lot in five really you can do a lot in two you sure i beg to differ you could do a lot um <laughs> it's really kind of crazy the amount of things that can be accomplished you know in such a short amount of time 10 minutes the places that's you can go scary Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was kind of crazy too. You know, there was a lot of back and forth, but this is cra- a crazy moment. Obviously, um, you know, Moria can control and contort Orr's shadow to make it so that Orr's can stretch, which was kind of cool. Of course. Everyone's like, okay, he can stretch now. Cool. But awesome. that was really cool. That was, I, I, I think, but it's really like, cool uh, to see. It was like, oh my gosh. I mean, it just was, I felt, it felt there were some moments in this fight where I was like, okay, come on. I don't now, know if that was just me. maybe you're feeling the same frustration that the Straw Hats were feeling when they were fighting him. You know, maybe that that's was a how, frustration you were meant to be mm, feeling. That's how I felt. I was like, come on, you guys, let's go. Like, let's beat this effer. I said, Moria more like Boria. I'll say it again. Gecko more like, heck no. Yeah. Oh, go off, queen. And you're actually wearing a crown today. Um, But this was another cool moment where... Robin kind of leaps into action and I thought shadows were done being took. Okay. But Robin kind of leaps into action. She freaking wraps her arms around Moria and breaks this man's back. Dude, she freaking banes this man. The straw hats. It was so funny. They're literally, I don't know who said it. Maybe it was one of the straws. Maybe it was one of the zombies and they're like, break his neck. Yeah. Break his, Robin, break his neck. I was like, dang. And then like later on, there is like a pretty like, crazy panel of like a spine being broken i was like this is the most graphic i think one piece has got good dude i need to get i need to see people get wrecked more dude. i wanted his neck to be broke too but it was just funny like this mom mentality like break his yeah. neck i loved seeing break him dude neck. i love seeing him freaking you know basically doubled over but of course again and this again. is where it starts to feel like oh man i'm done falling for this you got him and then you don't actually got him kind of thing but he was a, he's also able to switch places with his shadow so robin was actually holding his shadow and now now he's holding robin and mm-hmm. he steals robin's shadow which i didn't think any shadows were gonna get stolen that late in the game but you know it added it did add some stakes for me but but yeah the 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 i have another ability and i can actually do this was getting a little exhausting yeah um, but that is where Chopper kind of shows up and he tells him about Oars and that Oars was frozen and that's how he kind of, you know, he, there was something wrong with his mm-hmm. shoulder or his arm using his knowledge as a doctor and strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, Luffy shows up. Nightmare Luffy shows up. Nightmare Luffy. Nightmare. 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 Is that Luffy? Is that a, are you doing a thing right now or are you just excited about Nightmare Luffy? No, it was like Eric Andre. Remember when he's like, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Over my head. A lot yeah. of these. Yeah. Woo. Just like a yeah. ghost. 
Meow. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, there you go. There she kind of sounds like a like a turkey almost. She does. Yeah. It's she like, does. <laughs> it's so hard to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's turkey. Anyway. This was, this was so cool to see uh, you know, just this concept introduced. You know, maybe it doesn't have any like implications mm. into the, in, in going into the future of one piece but i think it's really fun to see here maybe it does maybe it doesn't but <laughs> i think it was so fun to see you know this just again nightmare luffy jack freaking blue right he's like blue that's what he looks like i didn't watch this part in the anime but in the, on the cover of the manga he's like blue yeah he's like blue he's like uh i mean he's 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 all like top heavy yeah he looks awesome yeah dude. He does look like a little Hulk, man. He looks like a little yeah. blue Hulk. You know? And he, I mean, immediately is, you know, obviously the the shadows, you gain their abilities, but also it's like the user, whoever's using them, like just like, you know, yeah. Roma with the corpse and, you know, Brooke's strong and he's strong. So it's just like strong, strong, you know, 100, you know, semi strong people makes Luffy like he immediately stops or his hand. He starts getting down to business and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, this is a monster. But it is only for 10 minutes. So he's only got 10 minutes to do it. He looks like he ends up doing it. He defeats Ors, wipes him out. Everybody's like, yeah. Yeah, break his neck. He got him. We put all our faith in him and it was all worth it. It was worth it. He's going to beat him and we're all going to be saved. Our shadows are going to come back. This this time of torture is done. And then Ors gets and back then up. And then Ors gets back up again. And then the Straw Hats get back up again. And then they get back up again. It's cool every time the Straw Hats get back up. At least the panels look awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, but again, you know, it's starting to wear. And um, this is kind of where Nami warns them about. Um, or we got that cool moment, too, with Nami jumping into the fight because she was kind of on the sideline. Yeah. She jumps into the fight with the weather baton, which is a really cool moment. And then she kind of forgets. Um, right, we're at this point, right, where she kind well, of she forgets. Yeah, she doesn't tell them until later. Yeah, until they're kind of wrapped up with mm -hmm. Ors. Pretty yeah, much. Ors and Moria. Yeah, pretty much. I think even when they, I think she doesn't even end up revealing it till they get their shadows back. That's tr that's true. And Moria too, like, oh well, the ones who don't get their shadows back, I don't even think is at this point. Oh yeah, Robin. You think that Robin and oh yeah 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 uh, Zoro and Sanji. Sanji is it Sanji or is it Frankie? Sanji. Sanji. Yeah, they're not gonna get their shadows back, and they're like, oh my god, they're so big. Yeah, that was oh. crazy too. I mean, obviously, I knew. I know, but every time it gets me because you feel well, so yeah. connected, you're like, oh, no, and the chopper freaking calls Sanji like Donji, like what? Oh, that was so funny. Sanji, he's um, just so cute. Also, this is where Luffy has that badass line about like, if you want to be the shadow of the king of the pirates, then uh, you know. You gotta, you gotta come over here. You gotta get your shit together. You gotta uh, come to me. Come Everybody talk else, to me. Knock on my door. Knock on my door. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you. Come on, knock on my door. Come on, knock on my door. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for Boo. Cause it's, cause it's, cause it's, it's yours and mine and yours. It's the Straw Hats crew. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so anyway, Luffy and the gang get in one final attack, one last combo breaker. Whoa. And of course, Moria, Ors is done, but Moria steals the shadows of everybody on through the bar <laughs> and gets the shadows of a thousand zombies. <laughs> And Luffy is trying to like, like defeat him. And I love that moment when he's like holding them all in his mouth. He's oh, like, yeah, that's funny. And they're like, he's never gonna let him go. He's never. His pride is too much. So hilarious. Um, everybody does eventually end up getting their shadows back. Yeah. And um, you think there's that moment where you think that you know some people might be getting theirs back a little too late. But uh, everything ends up working out for the crew, for the gang, and for most of the other people. I think all of the other uh, people on the Victims mm -hmm, Club mm -hmm. committee. Uh, and also Hogback and Ab Absalom Escape, which is what we said in the, in the Murphy portion of this video, too. Like, I don't care. I don't care what you guys do. Um, <laughs> you know, do it off page. Yeah, yeah. Bye. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll check up on you in like a, on like a cover page or something. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I kind of felt bad for Moria towards the end because like I think he just wanted Z Zombody to love. <laughs> OK, that was good. I like that one a lot, actually. Um, <laughs> after after um that after that great pun <laughs> kuma so nami's like about to warn everybody wait everyone i forgot to tell you there's another uh, uh, pause 
<laughs> pause. You know, like this. Pause. Pause. Um, so, uh, yeah, he shows up. Kuma shows up and is, or we see him, you know, being ordered by, every, uh, ordered by the government to wipe out everybody on the island. Uh, Another and, buster call. And, and it's kind of felt like a buster call. It's like nobody can ever know about this. We have to wipe out everybody. It, it did feel like a buster call without the Yeah, ships. but it's literally like, okay, isn't that scary, though? It's a buster call, and he goes, easy. Yeah. Well, what? That's, that's scary, and it's also like, yeah, the government wants you to think that they have this thing, a buster call, which is something that they can just, oh, it's such a rare thing that we do that we only give these gold, you know, shells mm -hmm. out to allow people to do it. But it's like, y y you freaking snakes, dude. You, you send a warlord of the sea who's under your control yep. to do like a, a pseudo buster call. You guys are dirty. You guys are playing dirty. They can do it all just one person. That's what was scary about it. I was like, so a buster call with all these people, one person get it done in a matter of like, you know, whatever. Easy. Yeah. Maybe the buster calls are just a way for them to flex their freaking muscles, dude. Oh, and, of and course. They, don't, yeah, they want mean, to show it off. Kuma was on some CP9 shit right there. He was working in the shadows, working on his own. I would say know? he's like crazier than CP9. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, and then we get to see because, you know, after that final attack that was able to take out Moria, because we realized that he was just kind of buying time and, you know, that he, he wasn't going to be able to, you know, sustain all those shadows as much as he or as long as he thought he was going to be able yeah. to. Um, everybody's kind of passed out. It took it, took it, took it all out of him. So it's really kind of up to Zoro to face Kuma and it's revealed more is revealed about Kuma's devil fruit, which is the pawpaw fruit and it's the power to reject anything. Mm -hmm. And the way, first of all, the implications, not only that we, the ones that we see um, used here, but the implications of other ways that this power can be used. It's like, I mean, it, there's so many possibilities. Oh yeah. I mean, just the way we get to see Kuma even like, it's almost like air pressure, like he's or he's rejecting. I, I'm not a freak. I'm not Vega punk, dude. I don't got the <laughs> mind. My mind's not 500 years. My mind's 500 years behind. Behind, dude. I'm like, yeah. I'm You're like, like caveman. Hey, I'm like uh, nega punk, you know? Yeah. Uh, instead of Vega punk, because I'm the opposite. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm like 500. You're like years. you could just say like dumb punk. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, 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 it's it's um, you know, it's 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 a cool devil fruit ability it's really really awesome and just to see how it's used here is yeah. incredible the explosion i mean just this guy's like a cyborg yeah i mean he's one of the pacifistas yeah like what is that name drop that okay yeah cool cool name drop that and don't tell us anything else about it you know mm -hmm. um I, I do think we're going to learn more about these things too and what exactly they are and is kuma was he human was he it, was he more what is he exactly you mm -hmm. know I, he is androids mm -hmm. or either i don't know i just feel like there's something more to him that we still even at this point in the for story, don't, sure don't know. for sure and then i mean you know like we kind of said with murphy he gives luffy all of the pain that he's been going through this entire time and he gives him just a small taste and zoro couldn't even handle that like it just kind of made me respect luffy so much more because he is like Everyone just kind of writes it off like, oh, he's super strong. He can handle it. He can handle it. He can handle it. And we kind of get a line with Usopp later. Like, I'm worried about him because you don't really worry about Luffy. Like, you're like, oh, Luffy will be fine. You know, well, he's yeah. so strong. And like, no one's really like taking into account, like how much damage, he, you know, damage he's actually taking and how much like a toll that these gears are like putting on his body and or what he's not, putting himself yeah. through. Yeah. And not that, but not only that, just that how powerful and how strong these people are like, yeah is is luffy actually outside of just pushing himself is he actually in danger of not being able to to handle these people well yeah that's i mean he's he like them. he's persevering mm -hmm. through this just you know for his crew mainly yeah, and, and he's um, getting by on the by the skin of his teeth the whole time seriously that's what kind of zoro and it made me you know appreciate him more and i think even zoro is like wow like i had respect for luffy and i had you know this um what's the word uh you know him being so dedicated to following him like now he's even more so yeah like loyal well, that's what I really liked about this whole part here and um, wanted to talk about this is, you know, 
outside of the reveal of him being some sort of android pacifista mm-hmm. um, sort of thing, this was a really cool moment for Zoro, obviously, finally leading us into why we get the joke. Um, I think that this was such a powerful moment, such a cool moment. It was a little, I think, strange for me. And we've already kind of gotten used to the fact that, you know, for whatever reason, Oda just doesn't like people dying and um <laughs> maybe that's so that when someone actually does that it actually carries and holds impact. more weight and impact but mm-hmm. with kuma's explosion the way he was talking about this explosion it almost made, made it feel like he's like oh yeah i'm gonna do my own buster call right now everybody's about to be wiped out and it was this huge massive you know island shattering explosion and everybody just passed out and i was like okay well yeah uh, i feel like that should have done some a little, a little bit more. more damage to those a people little more um, at least maybe not to the straw hats, but to, at least to the other just like random ass pirates who were on the island. Um, but um, I think the highlight here for me is like exactly what you said, just that there is a fear and we're we're understanding now that even though Luffy isn't necessarily human and the straw hats are monsters in a lot mm-hmm. of ways, they are not they are not um, free from danger or free from no. You know, they, they're they not exempt from, like, death. I mean, there there are some things coming up, and the way that Usopp is seeing things kind of unfold, it's concerning. Well, that's, you know, kind of, I think, intentional, because we do see, you know, Brooke's backstory, and how it's like, you could have this crew and be super strong, or not super strong, but be, you know, capable, and you could still, you know, die. You could still lose people. It, you know, it is inevitable. Um, and I think that was super touching. Obviously, you know, that whole <laughs> section of Brooke and that. Ba- oh, by the way, I mean, we kind of mentioned it, but yeah, nothing happens. We get it now. Oh, yeah. I kind of yeah. let's see if you can see. I kind of drew Zoro. It's yeah, it looks really awesome. bad. It looks but awesome. he's like, what happened? There's a bunch of blood. He goes, nothing nothing ha- nothing nothing at all and yeah. i was like oh my gosh we really mentioned guys it in the murphy uh, portion but you got really us. are you happy you got, got him us. got him and now i'm gonna carry forth the tradition oh. and i'm gonna get everybody else dude people are like, oh, <laughs> checking out one piece dude where you at the bark <laughs> nothing happens dude what a waste of time that arc uh, is nothing even happens dude and i'm gonna really just freaking drive you're gonna home, relish it. i'm gonna it. overdo it i'm gonna overdo it yeah um but here this is an iconic panel that we see here with zoro too and like you said i I don't want to kind of this is one part if anything that we really i want to dedicate at least a little more attention and time to is that like you said just the power of just zoro tasting a a piece of this pain not only does Mm -hmm. it make you really feel and understand sort of what zoro is going to have to endure by enduring all of it Mm -hmm. consuming all of it but it shows you to kind of like go off of what Usopp was saying and how he's worried about Luffy it shows you what Luffy's been enduring this whole time yeah no yeah exactly and it shows you like oh my god there's just like jolly happy go lucky you know nothing's wrong super silly and then inside he's just like i am hurting because i fight a lot of really strong people and i I can't i'm trying to keep up my body's trying to keep up but like i am holding on by a thread i think he said pain and anguish so it's just like he's feeling luffy's like anguish and again why i think brooke being here is such an interesting and great fantastic parallel because like you were talking about brooke and and getting to actually see what happens when a pirate loses his crew and and is is the sole survivor what that can do to someone's heart and mind Mm -hmm. um and body in a lot of ways um but we're also seeing here is i mean what like i don't know like luffy is like brooke in the sense, I guess, because Brooke is also covering a lot of pain and loneliness with these joke, these bone jokes. Um, he is a, 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 a former man who is yeah. carrying a lot of emotional baggage. And maybe uh, Usa, maybe Luffy's not carrying emotional baggage necessarily, but there is a lot of stuff that he is bearing. And we well, got to see, uh, you know, glimpses of that with the Usopp thing. Yeah, Brooke is like, yeah, he's pretty lonely because he has no body. Oh, wow. That was good, but you know, wow. Um, that was good. Uh, also, I want to say too that when you know Zoro tasted just a piece of it, piece. We watched the anime, and they kind of 
show or we watched uh, the the Binks brew kind of episodes and there's a portion where they kind of flash back to that moment and Zoro screamed dude yeah and he I tasted know. A, a piece of it I was like and oh that's what God. I'm saying like we you know Z- you know Luffy's fighting during a fight he's screaming you know he's breathing but you never hear like excruciating screams coming from Luffy like that Zoro got hit and was like ah like Literally, like, screaming bloody murder. Like, if Luffy was doing that the whole time, they'd be like, okay, maybe, Luffy, you need to calm down. But he knows that he can't show that to them because they'll tell him to stop. Yeah. Yeah, man, that was... I never expected to... to, to, to it's so interesting to see that sort of concept. You know, someone silently suffering or, I don't know, on the surface acting indestructible, that mm-hmm. concept being sort of depicted in this, like, in the way of like a giant paw, like you know, it's just, <laughs> I, that's what I love about uh, the kind of like pleasant absurdity of One Piece. Yeah. Um. But uh, this is where you know even Sanji kind of jumps up and tries to sacrifice himself, but ultimately Zoro's like, "No, nah, I'm the one that's gonna do it." And uh, Zoro, you know, takes it all and um, paws, and um, <laughs> he. Yeah, that's that's where that iconic panel comes in. And he's just sitting there. He goes to a separate location. And he's just covered. Everything is covered in blood. And he's just standing there, arms crossed. And that's a, such a beautiful and powerful panel. And um, when asked about it, that's when he says, you know, nothing happened. They're like, what happened? Nothing happened. Um, really powerful. Powerful, power, powerful. Powerful, powerful scene. Powerful, powerful character. character. For powerful sure. paw. Paul, 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 Werfel. power, power, Paul, Werfel. Pa. Um, power. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the gang ends up waking up and, uh, Nami a day later, a day later. And Nami, you know, uh, he's kind of like, everybody's kind of there. Everybody's kind of basking in the sun. They're having a giant party, giant barbecue. Like they do all the time. And Nami re- realizes she meets the, Lola's like I guess she meets the real Lola mm-hmm. and um, not the pig. not the boar who saved her yeah. earlier. Um, that was a cool kind of touching moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sanji kind of gets caught up by you know the other two guys who saw everything. Uh, he gets caught up on what happened. Robin, like you said before, being the chismosa that she is, puts chismosa. a little freaking ear. Dude. She's like, oh, that's what happened. I was like. Yeah, Robin, Robin I what? understand like it's really sweet that you're keeping the secret and it's really sweet that you're freaking like when you hear it, you're like, oh, that's really nice. But you're like you're you're, you're listening you're, in on a conversation that's, that you weren't asked to be in. Okay? But you're literally like addicted to the drama. <laughs> I love you, Robin. I really do. I love you. Um, so, yeah, that was a really cool moment, too, because we just see how you know willing everybody is to keep that secret and they're keeping it for the sake of just. You know the, the Luffy. They're keeping it for the sake of Luffy, and yeah, like to to not to not take anything away from Zoro's selfless act or the act that he did, like putting putting his crew and his captain at the forefront of his motivation mm-hmm. in his mind, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what you know what was so powerful about it too. You know, I think I can't remember if it was you or Murphy who had said it earlier, but. I think it might have been Murphy who was saying that like this is a guy who was like always talking about wanting to be the best this, the best that, yeah. the best, you know. And he was so willing to cast that aside in this moment for his captain. And that was a really powerful, powerful moment and powerful that everybody kept that secret. Um then we get the celebration and Luffy telling Brooke that they know Laboon. Oh my God. Yeah. I was crying so much. Yeah. It was so touching. And of course, watching this in the anime is like a must. Like, I'm are you sure kidding? Most people have, you know, seen the anime. But if you haven't, if you've only read the manga, please go check it out. I mean, you can't get that Binks Brew, like piano, that melody, like you all of it. All of it. Uh, Laboon's cute ass fucking whale noises. You can- <laughs> it's kind of like that. Huh? You literally tainted that memory. For it was me. kind of like that, huh? No, it was like, it was like. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> uh, but I mean, maybe Laboon. Uh, Laboon, more like, see you soon. Psych. Um, wow, dude, that was so crazy. You got to take that back. You can't be saying that kind of stuff. More like, psych. 
That was so disrespectful. I love Laboon. I'm literally like tearing out just singing about it. It was so great. And you realize how like how like tormented Brooke is yeah, and yeah, has yeah. been for so long. And just being on a ship all alone, not the being way- able to die with his crew like he wanted, like, you know, he wished that he could. He was like he, just being the last one left and staying on that ship and having those dreams of them all being together and waking up and no one's there. Uh, oh, it's just so much. Well, the thing I think with Brooke is, first of all, I think it was masterful how it was kind of cut between this backstory and, you know, past and present. Mm -hmm. past with the crew and then present just you know him walking lonely on this ship and just really seeing that you know back to back and juxtaposed really like hit it you know made it you know kind of drive it home and it was so emotional and so intense and i and i you know my heart broke when brooke kind of even daydreamed that they were still there and they were like all singing he's like oh my god i had this crazy dream that you guys were dead and and that's what i mean about him being another person like luffy Mm-hmm. Who maybe again, it's maybe different, but I do think that the, the maybe the kind of pain and the emotional baggage that they are carrying. Because again, I, I don't know if a Luffy has emotional uh, baggage, but Brooke definitely does, and I and I think Brooke is also kind of you know pushing that down or or, or hiding that. And I I don't know if he maybe you know I think I don't think he has survivor's guilt necessarily, but I do think he I don't know I I do think because he was made captain. At a certain point, mm-hmm. he was made captain of that crew when the original captain uh, got sick. Got sick and died. So I I don't know if he holds himself a little responsible. Maybe he does have a little bit of survivor's guilt. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But it 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 was just like, I, it was it was another. I don't know how he, Oda can keep giving us these emotional backstories and for them how they can end up continuing to work. But they but they do. And again, I think this was a sequence and a whole backstory that was really elevated by the manga which uh, tends yeah. to be rare in one piece apparently it was uh you mean the anime or the anime yeah, yeah, yeah. And even in the manga too i love 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 i want to get this like framed uh you know the binks brew lyrics and it has him with all of you know his old crew and him as a human and then just beside it again luffy you know the straw hats and then him as a skeleton same face like it was so much it was it was so emotional. It's like, it's, this is the same man. He's just gone through so much. And he still is like able to smile and like, like join another crew, even after everything that happened. And he's gone through that like pain before. And knowing that Laboon has like been waiting for him and that he's still around. It's just like. And that they uh, have this tone dial and that the, the oh rum gosh. bar pirates who can make crying kids laugh, which is a weird pirate creed to have. Um, <laughs> how, you know, they actually have this physical. Brooke has this physical representation of this like physical, you know. Recording. Recording of this song, of their you know last message they're they're literally the last thing they did before they all died yeah and he has this like actual thing that sort of encapsulates you know their last moments to give to laboon i mean that was just and that how he could see kind of seize them in the shell i mean that was also really powerful and i love how we're getting more of these dials again included Mm -hmm. throughout um but yeah i was absolutely blown away and uh even kind of more touched after watching the anime Um, Uh, yeah for real that is when obviously brooke officially 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 joins the crew laboon cuts to to laboon and laboon is very happy about this i want that reunion now i don't know i mean i he's just i just love i just yeah i want the reunion too but i just love how it cuts back to him and and Laboon is just happy for no reason and, and he's in good spirits, you know, because I think he feels that there's a connection, there's a bond because we do know that there's a connection between shadows and souls and bodies. Mm. So maybe there's connections between souls and that's why um, Laboon could feel it because mm-hmm. he felt it because mm-hmm. Brooke said, I'm coming. The, I'm coming the long way around. Like, like, like they say in doc, they say that in Dr. Who a lot. I'm coming the oh, long way around. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> That is when Frankie and Usopp, I think, kind of helped Brooke put together that pirate memorial. The oh my gosh, are you memorial. kidding me? Frankie's and, such uh, a good guy. Someone I, said like Sanji and Frankie are husband material on the ship, and I, <gasps> I 100% agree. 
Yeah. They're the most. I mean, I think Us- Usopp could treat you right too. Zoro's just like too mean, but he might be that mean that's like he's only not mean to you, you know? Yeah, I mean, he might be kind of like, yeah, he might. He just seems that, indifferent about everything. Demon arts in the bedroom, you know what I mean? Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I mean, he's also another guy where if he uses that one demon art thing, then he's got like multiple Three. arms, multiple heads, yeah. multiple all kinds of things. Um, hmm. But Chopper planted the flowers too. Don't forget that. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying. literally dying. I literally was taking my last breath watching these. I it was so emotional. I was just so happy for Brooke. It it just meant a lot and he's just been alone for so long and i was just over the moon when he's now you were up there official. with a nail dude and no, you were i there. was i was a muskrat, you were a muskrat. I, was a, I was a robot muskrat you were a freaking muskrat over there <laughs> um this is where the gang finally says farewell and we learn about the i'm gonna mispronounce this but the viv 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 i don't know these v-i-v-r-e V-I-V. Vivery cards. Vivery, vivery paper. Vivery cards and life paper. Life paper, yeah. Uh, um, it's a life paper. It cannot be destroyed. It is connected to the user. And um, if you get a piece of paper and you kind of put it down, it'll kind of always point in the direction or kind of move to the direction of where that person is. Kind of like a... Like a kind of like a... What are they called? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Know. The a orb. compass? No, yeah, but in one piece. Oh, like the the uh, uh, the eternal poses. Yes. Or or log poses. But log poses. Um, yeah, and this is kind of interesting too because you know we see Lola give them a piece of paper that belongs to her mother, and they start talking about mamas and mama. And uh-huh. I know that, and we kind of talked about this in the Murphy thing too. And Murphy, I think, was holding back. I'm a, I'm gonna say it here. I think Murphy was holding something back. I think so she... too because I kind of know already. Oh my God! You know everything. You even. <sighs> Sorry. Um, but shall we? This also leads us into realizing or remembering that Ace gave Luffy a piece of paper as uh-huh. well. Luffy also is reminded of this and remembers this and pulls it out. And it's freaking disintegrating. I thought these things were supposed to be indestructible. You set fire to them and you freaking put them on water. They don't get wet or they don't burn. All of a sudden, this was falling apart in the palm of Luffy's hand. And it's because the life is being snuffed out of snuffed Ace. Snuffed out. Yeah. And that ain't good. Because he's up. He's up. Up. And he's 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 not um ample. He's ample. Oh down bad. Y- yeah. I mean you got there though. You got there. Did you have that one written down or did that no, one was off the cuff? Came, that one, that one felt top. super off the cuff. Off the top. Yeah. And off the imple down. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude, I'm off the imple down right now. Bro, I'm freaking imple down right now. Hey, are you hey you wanna go hey, to the fool? hey fool, you wanna go to the store? Hey, Ifle, I'm impled down. Dog. Hey, are you impled down or what, homie? Yeah, fool, let's go to the store. I'm impled down. Uh, um, <laughs> but I do think that we're getting a lot of stuff introduced here again. Just we like those are. freaking dials. It was going to be super, it's going to be super important mm-hmm. later on. And mm-hmm. we're obviously now on some sort of mission it looks like to head towards wherever ace is at or see what kind of danger ace is in and figure all that out and um i'm super excited i i actually really enjoyed thriller bark a lot i thought it was a blast we kind of talked about some of our final thoughts already um in the murphy portion but I don't think it deserves as much as much flack as it gets, although I do agree with a lot of the points that people make. I do think that it was a low point for Sanji, although I don't think it was maybe the 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 worst thing in the world. It was not it was, a good look. Mm-hmm. It wasn't um, a look, yeah, for sure. And um, I do think that the villains weren't great, but they also weren't terrible. And I actually did think that there were stars among them like Perona, for yes. sure. And I think that even, um, you know, getting to, you know, meet Kuma and obviously Brooke. I mean, I think there is a lot to love here and the fights and the comedy. I think Thriller Bar ultimately for me was such a fun journey, although I cannot wait. And I am again, I said this in the previous video, I'll say at the end of every video going <laughs> forward, I'm more and more and more and more and more excited um, to keep reading. Um, this was a blast for me. But Megan, how was it for you? Yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean, like I said in the beginning, I never thought I would. Uh, get to see like zombies or anything like horror uh, like genre and again you think that Oda won't do it and he does and it was super enjoyable Uh, the setting the zombies uh, Perona obviously like such a cute character 
uh, just so much fun. And all of the characters, once again, um, get to shine in their own different ways. We get a new straw hat, which is always exciting. And now I feel just like, I don't know. I mean, I know there is, I think, one more, but I just, it just feels like, okay, now I've seen these guys and now they're here. And now we're finally getting to, yeah. to where we're going on the Thousand Sunny. We're finally getting some meat on these bones that was pretty good i thought it was gonna, you were gonna be more excited well it didn't really um, like hit my funny bone or anything okay you had that one written down you had to have had that one written down um <laughs> anyway yeah i understand the critiques i understand the criticism i understand the you know feelings i get the joke now and i will pass it on and pass it along and pass it mm -hmm. down um but overall i think for me i mean this was more enjoyable, I would say, than Skypea for me. This was I would agree. Definitely more enjoyable than Long Ring Long Land, even though someone had a controversial opinion in our comments and said that they enjoyed Long Ring Long Land more. But that's you're a crazy person. <laughs> Just kidding, I love you. Um but yeah, I mean it, it's definitely I don't think it's never, it's not gonna rank, you know, on my top two or three, you know, arcs, but I you know, currently I mean, it might be top five. That That is probably in, inevitably going to change the deeper we get into <laughs> yeah. this story. But like, um, I actually um, really, really, really enjoyed me it. Me too. It was a lot of fun. Um, well, that's going to do it for our Thriller Bark Conclusion Part 2 episode. We delivered. We gave you the Perona cosplay Yay! with a little sprinkle of some, some Kuma. Kuma. And um and uh how about that Murphy, huh? A lot of people guessed it I in the know. comments, but uh you guessed right. You guessed right. Whoever guessed Murphy guessed right, and she was a blast, she was so great, and we love to have her back again. Comment uh, in uh, what future you, reviews. Yeah. yeah, comment it what you guys would think uh would be like a good video to have her on, a specific arc that you'd like to see us collab or on. Or one piece discussion, even maybe even to like make it more broad. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think she just like yeah. Let us know, because we always like the suggestions. Yeah. Let us know how you like this uh, collab, because uh, we loved it. Yeah, it was, it was it was great. I mean, she is truly a delight. We also watched Strong World recently, uh, and we also maybe might like to do a video on that. So if you made it all the way to the very end, and you'd really, 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 really want to see a video um, about our thoughts on Strong World, which uh, apparently uh, takes place right after Thriller Bark. I mean, then, uh, leave a little, uh, leave a little comment. Yeah, if we if we get enough comments, you it's not like you have to, it's not like you're gonna strong arm us into doing it. Megan, we, you're Thriller barking up the wrong tree right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was that fun was a grave mistake. Oh, you know what? You're getting on my last bone. <laughs> I don't know. Good I, I, God! Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. That was bad. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's going to do it for the episode. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, we did it. We made it. Um, you guys are the best. Before we go, though, we have to shout out and we have to thank and leave your thoughts on on some some more thoughts on, you know, sort of the more in-depth discussion we had on these sort of, sort of more controversial points. But before we go, we have to shout out. We have to thank our wonderful, our beautiful amazing patreon members Yay! and i am not gonna let a freaking cosplay like this go to waste i dare not let the camera stay on me oh. while your name scroll past so megan why oh, don't you yeah. go ahead and thank our wonderful beautiful amazing patreon members thank you guys so much uh this cosplay i mean it you guys help us out so much we were able to do this whole thing without you um this was so much fun and of course it's not you like know, you said we don't we, we we did it without them but we wouldn't be able to do it without oh them. did i did it sound like that maybe just to me oh maybe just to <laughs> <laughs> uh, again you know what i meant we love you guys so much and thank you so much for all your support uh every time we get a new patreon member it's like insane to us uh it really is just a, a thing that never like doesn't surprise us so we're like what these people want to support yeah. us like it's just such a crazy feeling and you guys are all so nice and we really appreciate everything that you do for us because it is so much yeah we put a lot of uh we put our whole nani our whole punani into these things and we wouldn't be able to do it uh, at the level and the quality that we are able to do it at without yeah. you guys and these cosplays uh this little hat and these glasses and this entire 
amazing getup would not exist without you guys. You, our Patreon members, make it possible. Thank you. Um, and if you would like to become a Patreon member and get early access to all of our videos, including access to our exclusive bonus Patreon podcast, Volume 1 Extra, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash volume one pod or click join on this video. We really appreciate all of your support, not just our Patreon member support. We also truly and really appreciate the support of everybody watching, listening, liking, commenting, mm -hmm. subscribing. If you're looking for ways to support that are absolutely free, you can become gang affiliated and join that Algo gang. Comment whatever you want in the comments. It really helps boost us in the algorithm, put us out in front of more people. And what helps a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot is sharing this video with another One Piece friend or fan or posting it somewhere, sharing it somewhere that you think people will be interested. But all, any and all support means so much. Um, I've said it before, but... Um, I, for the most of my life, have been in a place where financially supporting people wasn't something I was able to do, uh, and that is not a problem at all. Um, there are plenty of other ways you can do it, and we appreciate it all. Um, but I think that's gonna that's gonna do it, right? Mm -hmm. I think we got to we got to everything, right, Megan? Yeah. Um, this has been so much fun. Um, the only thing we have to do now is get out of here on our outro mm. that is always the same and never changes, which today has to be. Come on, Megan, you've been killing it. You've been on, you've been stepping your freaking pun game up, dude. You've been I on know. fire. Um, um, what if we just go, you, -ho 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 -ho. that's good. That's kind of good, right? Mm -hmm. I wish we knew the Binks Brew song and then we could, I know. Um, okay, let's just do the yo ho. -ho. Okay. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here at the very end. We're so excited to continue this One Piece journey with you. But until next time, yo ho 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 ho